COP244 NAA. Okay? My name is Fardat. I'll be uh, taking care of the, um, the, the uh, OP244 for you. Uh, this is the very first day, and uh, uh, I am going to talk about a few things. Um, it's going to be lots of preaching and lots of uh, do and don'ts that um, statistically 80% of you forget at the end of the semester. So um, I want you to really listen to what I'm going to say because that guarantees you're passing the subject. It's not something that I'm going to, okay, so we'll go through it. Uh, first, I'm going to start with a promise. My promise to you is if you follow my instructions and tell me what I'm asking you to do, you're not only going to pass this subject, but you're going to also pass it with flying colors. Okay? That's my promise to you. If you follow what I say and listen to what I'm saying, and, good morning, and if you have a problem, you immediately discuss it with me and try to find a solution for it, I'll guarantee you are going to have a very successful semester. What are recipes for disaster? Number one, being a student. If you are attending this class as a student, it's written student's DNA to procrastinate, which means, ah, we're going to drink beer tonight. Tomorrow I'm going to take a look at this. I have time. As soon as you, the minute you told you that, I'm going to go out with my boyfriend tonight. Tomorrow I'm going to take a look at it. I'm going to take my girlfriend to yada yada. Tomorrow I'm going to, okay? You do that, that means you started going downhill, okay? Um, I'm not asking you to um, make the subject your, the goal of your life, okay? I'm just asking you to do your stuff on time so you can detect you have problems early. If you find out you have a problem in first two weeks of the semester and you come to me, I can work with you to help you catch up. But you come two weeks before the final exam or final test and you tell me, I I'm in deep trouble. If I don't pass this subject, my life is going to get ruined and my marriage is going to get canceled and my mother is going to kill herself. That's not going to happen. We can't do anything like that. Two weeks before the final, I can't help you. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to actually add it to my uh, first uh, message on Microsoft Teams. I'm going to add you all to the team that we have. If you click on it, I think it asks you, you can request to join to it, right? Have you clicked? If you do that, please request to join. And at the same time, I'll try to add you manually. So that's one of the things I'm going to tell you. At last two weeks of the semester, I'm not available anymore. Okay? I'm just letting you know. From, this is day one. Last two weeks of the semester, I am not available. You cannot contact me. You cannot get an appointment with me because it's a hectic time. Um, we are going through all different types of things that we are supposed to do. The last two weeks, I'm not available. First 12 weeks of the semester, I'm available 9 to 5 by appointment. I don't set office hours. Okay? And I sent you a video, I think, that you can click on, and it shows you how to book an appointment with me. And that's how you do it. One of the most important things you need to do in this subject is, one of the most important thing, thing you need to do in this subject is, that was interesting, okay. To be exact, okay? If you want to buy a gun, they take you through a course. And they'll teach you stuff. Like, do not point a gun to anyone, even if the gun is empty. There is nothing in it. Why would they do that? It's empty, I'm, no, I'm sure. And boom, somebody's dead. Why? Because... 
bullet was left in there, you didn't know. Okay? You are programmers. When I ask you to, you're good. <laughs> Come in. <laughs> My lady with a banana, half eaten. <laughs> All right? So when we are telling you, first do this, second do this, third do that, fourth do this, there is a reason for it that you might not understand now. Okay? When you don't understand why I'm asking you to do something, first do it, then come and ask me, why did you ask me? Why did you force me to go through all those stuff? Okay? So when I put steps on those series of YouTube videos and I ask you, first do this, then do that, then do this, you are I'm essentially starting to know you guys by responding to those things. When I received the first collaboration request, I actually received already around six or seven of them from you. And I see you did not follow the instructions. I know you're the one who's going to be in trouble. Okay, so I'm asking you to follow instructions specifically. I'm going to tell you that it's going to look like this at the end. You will see what it looks like and then have yet you submit something else. Why we do this? Because if you don't follow one, two, three, four airplanes crash, trains collide, people die. It's not a joke. You are now writing a loop to write five numbers. I know that. But all of you are going to go further in life and become people that are key role players in the world. And the world is the world of computers. So you must follow the rules to the point. I will ask you to do a series of stuff. And initially, it's going to be difficult for you. Following rules is, difficult. is not an easy thing to do, right? Because you have your own habits. But as a student who's not in charge, or as an employee who's not in charge, which it's going to be you the first 20 years of your work until you become the person who makes the decision, you need to follow other people's instructions. There is no way around it. I hope you understand this. This is an extremely important thing. Are we good? All right. Another thing. Human beings have one language processor. When I'm talking, and one, two, three, four, five, six people are looking at their laptops. No matter how genius you are, you didn't get beep from me. If I were you, I would close down my laptops. No, no. Think about it first. I, listen to my advice. Go to the dollar store, get a booklet old-fashioned book like in a pencil. Take notes like that. You don't, this does not do anything to your brain. When you type something, it doesn't translate anything to your brain. When you are writing analog, you are trying to convert the knowledge that I'm giving you to an analog thing on the paper. It commits it to your long-term memory. This distracts you. You have one language processor and it doesn't do multi-threading, which means you look at your computer, you're not going to understand what I'm saying. You will simply miss it. Some of you have mastered the skill to do that. I respect that. Um, that's why I'm not saying everybody close it down. But again, that's just my suggestion. Take notes. Why? Anything I do in class, I sneeze, it's on the recording, and the notes are uploaded to GitHub. I'll show it to show you. Take a look. Hachoo! So you're going to hear that in the recording the first time you're watching it. Okay, so that was the proof for that. And the other proof is here. Farda's notes archive. It's from semesters and semesters ago. Open any of them. Look at the section, pick a date, 
these are the things I have done in class. Every single thing that I have done in class, it's here. You don't need to take notes. You have any note that I write. Just follow workshop zero, and you have access to it with a simple pull. Okay? So that's that. But again, if you think it's helping you, sure, no problem. To me, as a teacher, nothing is more satisfying to get a student that tells me I got hired at this place for DevOps doing C++, and I just got that two weeks ago, okay? And she just finished my 3, 4, 5, and went for co-op for that. Got hired for DevOps de development. That's huge, okay? So, please, what else? Hot, <coughs> too hot. Burnt everything down. <laughs> okay, <laughs> didn't expect that. So, so let's go through the uh, first. How many of you know Git? What is Git? Uh, actually, the Git is a version control system. Version control system. Who else says they know? What is Git? You said you, you know. What is version control? What does it mean, version control? During develop, like you set up this first version one first, and then you keep developing, and you and then you set up version two, and different version make sure that in case you think did those things wrong, you or you should share different version to your friend, you could you could use it. Beautiful. She can actually come over here and teach instead of me. That was perfect. So version control is essentially a, an extremely powerful undo command. So I'm going to give you a little history. Today is a boring day, but the next of it is going to be challenging. So, so enjoy the day while you can. And I always sit at this table, and it's ready to buckle because I'm 100 kilos. So, <laughs> so there was this guy called Linus Torvald. Who knows who's Linus Torvald? You don't talk. <laughs> Linus Torvald. So Linus Torvald is a person who created Linux operating system in his basement. Okay? Literally. Then he said, this is a good thing. I'm going to open it to everyone. So, and ask anybody who wants to, to add features and do collaboration on it. And that made Linux operating system the world's largest open source collaboration in the world. There are around 20,000 developers and organizations right now that contribute to the operating system. Do you know why it doesn't have any viruses in it? Because all those people who write viruses are developers in the Linux thingy. So, <laughs> they can. so that's what Linux is. It's made by everyone. Anything you do is eyeballed by 20,000 people. You can't do anything wrong. Nothing goes. You know, it's, it is impossible for you to do something and it remains unnoticed. That's why open source is such a powerful thing. So after doing that, after all the collaborations came in, Linus got like tied up with all things that are coming in. It's supposed to merge the code and keep adding to the OS things that people do. It's very difficult. Just imagine, you did an IPC144 thing. You wrote a little program. If somebody wanted to say, add this feature to yours, you had to sit for two hours, see where do I put this thing, right? It's a difficult thing. Now, it's, imagine it's an operating system, and people are collaborating on it. So what happened, the genius guy that he is, he created another tool. He called it Git. Git is a version control system, which remembers every aspect of thing you do on a project by anyone who is doing it. Which means you can select the code from this one, merge it with that one, do it over here, take out this one. Oops, I made a mistake. I want to go back this many times and go undo it to this stage. You can do anything you want and any little commit. Commit essentially means safe. 
Commit means create a turning point. I may come back to this point one day. Okay? Commit is a turning point. So at, as soon as you commit your code, you're saying, remember this. Remember this. Remember this. Remember this. So when I program, what do I do? I'm programming. Oh, I have to go to the washroom. I commit and I label it going to pee. And I run. And I come back. And when I do everything and I go forward, something goes wrong. And I say, when, before I went to pee, the code was good. So I say, revert to the pee time. And that happens. So you have to be like that. Commit more, commit often. And keep doing it. Why? Because you are supposed to work in repositories. Workshop zero is for that. I do that in my class. If you are my student, you have a repository and you work in that. And I can see every single thing you are doing. And I can track it. And when you do something wrong, I can simply go over there, take up your code, show it to you, fix it, push my change to it, call it Fardad's fixes. Then you simply go to Git and say, show me the differences. And Git puts your code at left, my differences at right, and highlights everything that has changed. So you know exactly what I did to fix it. There is nothing better than that. You don't need to memorize it. You need to just learn it and keep going. Because if I did something and they say, which part of that changed? I have no idea. That's why all my helping sessions are through Microsoft Teams and only through GitHub. You have any problem, you send me the URL of your repository and you tell me, I have memory leak. Then you Contact me, you say, I have memory leak. I tried this and this and this, it didn't work. I think problem is in here, but I can't fix it. Then I'll take over. I hate people that send, send something like this. This is the URL of my repository. My program doesn't work. What that gives me, it means you just hit the first obstacle that you had and you're not willing to try to fix it yourself, and you want to get an easy way out for me to help you, okay? Even those calls I get, but I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to try to challenge you. That's why your workshops, anything that you do, is going to have a code review. Each of you will have at least one code review with me, which means at a certain point, I'm going to tell you it's not because you did something wrong. I'm just going to say, I'm going to have a code review on your workshop next week, on your workshops next week. Then I bring them down, up and I take off workshop two and I ask you, why did you do this over here? You have to be able to explain to me why. If you didn't, it means you didn't write it. Chat GPT did. Okay? So, and the mark for that will go, Phew. okay? You need to know if you are doing chat GPT, I don't care. As long as you understand what your code is doing. And this is serious. So if I'm, it's workshop nine and I'm doing a code review and I see you cannot explain any of your workshops, they all go zero and I'll stand behind it. It's not one of those things that you can appeal. If you cannot explain what did you write and I even open cheating, you can cheat as long as you cite it. You are writing the program. You don't know what, how, what the, how am I supposed to do this? I have two hours due date. No matter how I tried, I couldn't fix this. I cannot get a hold of Fardad. What do I do? Jack, can you give me that part? Sure. Jack gives you that part. You insert it in your thing. You replace your functions with Jack's function. Then you cite it. Everything is written by me, but this part is borrowed from Jack, yada, yada, student number, yada, yada. I will thank you, Jack. And you only lose mark for that part. So instead of 100%, you get 95. So I don't want you to feel cornered. Nowhere in the world you're alone on your own to do a program without any help. It's impossible. You learn by getting help from others. But again, after three weeks, if I'm doing a code review, you need to tell me how did the JAX code work. Okay? You need to understand how it works, and I'm fine. 
Are we all okay with that? Does anybody have any objection to that? It's being recorded in here in your appeals. I'm going to bring this up. We're all good? All right. I'm very generous in marking, OK? As long as I see you are doing the work. That's being recorded, too. All right. Did I scare you enough? That was enough. Good, you know. <laughs> uh, let me see what 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 else. So, uh, let me bring up the. Uh, let me bring up the uh, the the announcement and just take a look at it and just go through. It. Actually, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shoot! Now it's gonna try try and. By the way, Seneca College is now Seneca Polytechnic. So all the emails that you have from any of your profs, they are all changed to Polytechnic, OK? So it's not Seneca College anymore. It's Seneca Polytechnic, OK? We're all good with that? All right. You don't need to worry about you are still my Seneca.ca. Your emails remain the same. So this semester, I'm back to IPC. so. Oh, no, not, ah, not that one. Announcements. So, statistics say that when you send a large email or announcement, statistics say, statistics say, you usually read the first three to five sentences, and the rest you just, okay? That's why I have to do this. This is important. <laughs> Okay, hello and welcome to OOP244 NAA. I am Fardad. My last name <laughs> is Soleiman Lu. You have it somewhere in your thing, right? You can see it. Sadly, you need to learn how to spell that because all the submissions and stuff are working through the program I wrote, that submitter thingy. So if you hate that submitter, you should hate me. <laughs> I'm the person who did it. So, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, so um, I'll be teaching your OP244, and I'm excited to learn with you all. And I really learned with you. I'm not joking. It's 20, it's past, I, I think it's 26 years I'm doing this, or 27 years. And every single semester, a student comes up with something that I don't know. And one of those people, when I don't know something, I proudly say, I don't know. I'm going to go find out. I don't want to give you some BS to keep my pride as a prof. No, that's not the case. I'm going to learn with you. And this is reality, OK? The reality of it. Many things I have forgot, forgotten because I haven't used it for a long time. It's somewhere back in memory vault. To start, prepare your computers and learn about GitHub by Workshop Zero due on Monday, January 15th. When I say due on Monday, January 15th, it means due on Monday, January 15th. Don't be late on that, OK? This tells me what kind of a student I'm dealing with. This is representing you. If you have problem doing it, immediately let me know so I can help you. And how to book an appointment, I sent it somewhere. Where did I send it? Did I send you something that actually click and show how to, a video of how to book an appointment with me? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll show you where, OK. Lectures today. Today is all preaching, I told you. I'm going to talk about object orientation. No, don't worry about it. So I'm going to teach you the whole object oriented. Uh, if we have time, I'll teach you the whole object oriented uh, um, philosophy, what you are about to learn throughout the semester. So I'll tell you what it is. Object orientation is essentially uh, orient your work, focus your work on objects, which essentially simulates the real world. So we need to simulate the real world in our programs to easily design things. Because if you don't, then it's difficult to design things. In real world, objects simply exist and they work. If you design your code around it, your code simply exists and works. 
So you're going to learn what are the aspects of object orientation today, and you're going to carry it with you over and over and over. Who knows what is care of forgetting? No one. Okay. I should have put a picture over here for it or something. But I'm just going to let you know. When you get an hour lecture, okay, same day, you should review it for 30 minutes. Next week, you should review it for 10 minutes. Next month, you should review it for five minutes, and it will be committed to your long-term memory. Okay? 30, 10, 5. If it's an hour. If it's an hour and 40 minutes, multiply it by that thing. So remember, same day, 30, 20 minutes. Week after, 10 minutes, approximately one-third or half. A month, just five minutes glance through it, and it will be committed to your long-term memory. Okay? That's how our brains work. Okay? R many of my students get out of the class and say, Yes! I understood everything. Let's go party! And poof, everything goes out of short-term memory. <laughs> Alcohol does that. But anyway, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, so lectures. So, that's what we're going to do today. Lectures is going to be today. But usually, especially at the first half of the semester, we don't have enough time. Exact opposite in the second half. Lots of stuff are coming in through the half, first half of the semester because we have to teach you how to think object oriented. That's, that's the first half. Um, we sometimes leak our lectures to lab time. So when it's lab, I continue the lecture and then yada, yada, yada. Okay? But lab times are essentially for you to do your lab. You start, the labs are usually uh, released on Fridays. Um, and depending on when is your lab, t lab day, you get the due dates. So you never start your lab in your lab session. You do your lab at home, you come for help. To, to the lab and ask questions about it, and I'll help you with it, okay? So remember, lab time is not for you to start your lab in, it's to get help with your lab. And of course, one-to-one -one help available by appointment, no more than 30 minutes, okay? Last semester I didn't say that, and students would go book an hour and a half <laughs> uh, uh, appointments that is uh, unrealistic. All right. Recordings. I said, delete this if you do not record this session. I forgot to remove it. Let me fix it. <laughs> this is because I gave this to other props too. And uh, uh, how do I how do I edit this? There's no edit button anywhere. Um, edit. <laughs> so. I try to, I try to save, I try to record all my sessions, but you, oh, it says draft over there, I should post it. Oh, so you're going to get a second thing right now. Okay. Anyway, so, <laughs> so I try to record the sessions, but don't trust it, okay? Being in here in person is a completely different story than sitting at home watching the YouTube video. And I don't post it immediately. I have lots of work to do, and I have a slow internet connection at home. It's like an hour and 40 minutes video. You know how long it takes to, to... Oh, he feels extremely embarrassed. Let's everybody clap. <laughs> all right, all right. The person with one and a half cookie. All right, so, uh, <laughs> so I do this all the time. My apologies if you are... If you are if you are target of my jokes, it's just to make the class as you see. I don't want the class to be some dry thing I'll come over here. 4i equals to 3i. I don't want to do that, right? I try to uh, do something. So, my apologies, my friend. I hope you're okay with that, with your cookies. All right. So that's actually very helpful, okay? If you're not fat like me, get something sugary with you in class. And, but don't gobble it. Just have it little by little. It helps a lot. It's really, seriously. That's what, that's what our brains eat. Sugar. 
So, uh, so recordings are not guaranteed. That's what I wanted to say. Things go wrong and microphones go out of battery. So if you see this light thingy over here, I'm just going to do it like this. Flashing immediately tell me to change the battery. Many times I kept through the thing and we have a lecture with no audio. So, yeah. Uh, these lectures are good to review, okay? And I have lots of other students who want to attend the class and they can from other sections. I, I just leave it over there. It, it's a habit I, I have from since a decade ago, a long, long time ago. I started then and it kept going. So if you go look at OOP244 far that like 900 videos are coming up. Don't watch them. Look at these. If anything's missing, then you can refer to those. Read the faculty information. I'm going to go through it with you. We're going to have quizzes weekly. No announcement for it. If I can, I get a quiz. If I can't, next week I get two quizzes. Okay, so quizzes are all coming in. They are on the things that I teach, and a couple of questions probably from the next session. Okay? Not too much. Just want to see if you know what are we talking about the next time. Okay? And please do not study the next session. I don't believe in that. 20 years of teaching, I don't believe if you go and study and come to class, you're going to have an advantage. If you if you are one of those people can, that can self-study, then you don't need me. I, I have people that come to class, get their A plus, and go away, and just sitting over there for, as a respect. Okay? So I really appreciate it. And usually those are the people who are always coming to class for some unknown reason. But, <laughs> but, but uh, if you are one of those, my respect, do whatever you want to do. But if you are one of those people who are struggling, Please don't try to understand, study the session and then come over here. It's much more difficult to correct an incorrect understanding than giving you something fresh. So start with me, then go read and study, then come with questions with me so I can fix it. Okay? And I want it to be a habit. Try to book appointments with me and I'll go through it. And with... Uh, 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 tutors that we have down in Learning Center, don't trust 100% what you get from a tutor. Have them as just another matter of opinion. If it fits, perfect. But if you see something's fishy, then you can come and talk to me and I'll explain why the person told you things that you think it's wrong, but it's right or it's not, so I can correct things. So you need help. Uh, We'll go to, so we're in faculty, Shmigali Dingi will talk about it. Workshops, you have 10 workshops, five workshops before the uh, uh, study break. It has two parts, each of them, one and two. Part one uh, is supposed to be designed in an easy and guided way, so you can literally look at the instructions and do it. And part two, I call it DIY, which I tell you what I want, not much of instructions, you have to do it yourself. Okay? And you can come up with whatever you want in that. Second half of the semester, you have five workshops. Only part one, no part twos. Why? Because my project kicks in. And my project has ten submissions, five milestones. Milestone one, two, three, four. Each has a complete or incomplete. And if you need help with your code, if you advise, you need, you need advice, for your code for these four milestones, you need to ask me. Farad, I wrote this thing, you book an appointment, and you initiate the code review. Okay, but that's a different code review. You do, I want a Farad, I want a code review, I want a milestone, I want to know I'm on the right track. I'm going to go through it and give you some beautiful pointers. Okay, not that I'm a genius, it's just I've seen so many bad code that I know what a good code looks like. Okay, so I just look at your code and I'll tell you what you're doing wrong and what you're doing right. And then these four milestones, each one takes 10% of your mark. You must submit them all. And these have very loose due dates, which I tell you if the due date is today, you, still if you hand it seven days late, you get the full mark for it. But after a week, there is no partial mark. It goes zero but you have to still submit it. You have to get that zero. So the first, full, first four milestones must be submitted. 
either 1 or 0, which means 0 or 10%. That's a site. Then milestone number 5 is essentially the application, which the features of the application is split into six ways. So if the application is doing six things, not to make your life difficult to go through a huge submission, I broke it into small six submissions. So if you submit the first three, you get 30%. If you submit the whole thing, you get 60%. With the 40% becomes 100. Okay? So if you couldn't apply all the features and you miss two of them, you still get 80%. Okay? That's the project. Midterm test. Careful, midterm test, 20%. Final assessment, 40%. 60% of your marks are on what you do on your own. How I do it? I do it on lab computers. Chat GPT's users, sorry, you're only allowed to open two applications. Notepad++ to write your code in it, and the Seneca test, these two things are the only things that you can open. Everything else is blocked, okay? So what you do, you bring up the question, you write your code in Notepad++, you copy it, you paste it into the test as a code. So it has to be syntax highlighted. I am very picky about that. I created a video. I'm going to create a demo test for you that you can do it 50 times to get used to it and see how it's done. If I don't get a formatted code in your test, I will not mark it. If you just give me a straight thing like your no indentation, all black coming up and down, I'm not going to mark it. It's not that I'm not going to mark it. I don't have time to mark it. I have 100 students. 100 garbage things, if I try to decipher what you have done, it's going to take three weeks. I can't do that. Okay? I have written a program myself. I call it rubric, which means essentially I go through the points and I mark the points that you have done. So if you submit your code properly, you just write F-O-R as a four in a program that gets 100 marks. That for loop has two marks. You get that two, two marks. I'll give you the mark for every single thing that you do. But after four months of programming, if you don't know how to indent your code, you're in trouble. And Notepad++ does that for you. And it even gives you some little help IntelliSense thingy like Visual Studio. So you don't have to, you don't, you're not going to misspell that SDR LAN. You're not going to misspell that C in and C out. So it actually gives you help with the language. Again. I'll give you the demo, again, the YouTube video of what, it, what the test, how the test is supposed to be. And I'm going to give you uh, a demo test that you can do it. And I encourage you to come to the lab, the lab that you are, is, is your lab. Go in your lab, in that lab, open the test and try it and make sure everything is good. Okay? And all the sessions are being recorded. All your computers while you are doing the test is being recorded. And when you start the test, that I'll take the test one hour and 50 minutes. Uh, it's never the full thing, so we have 20 minutes. First, you log into the session. You do everything. Then you pass all your cell phones to the head of a table. So all the cell phones come over here. I count the cell phones by the number of people. And then you start the test. You have nothing. The only thing you're allowed to bring is a reference sheet and a blank sheet to write stuff when you're doing walkthroughs. That's all. And I'll collect them at the end. Okay? Uh, if anybody has a second cell phone and it comes out, having a cell phone in my test is considered cheating. You immediately get zero and it goes to AI. It's being recorded. You're not allowed to have any smart device with a screen bigger than your watch, okay? You can. And it has to go right to the thing. Yes. Anything you want. You can put, I don't know, history of Canada in there. Anything. I don't care if you write it with pen, if you write it with pencil, if you, write, if you print it with size font for and bring a microscope. I don't care. <laughs> One A4 thing, and, and, 
and another experience as a student and as a prof. One, one of those people who never forgets he was a student. Anytime I wrote a reference sheet, I didn't need to use it. So writing a reference sheet is an important thing. The most stupid people are those who go buy their reference sheets or get their friends. Because you get, get lost in the thing, you don't know what is where, you have exactly 45 seconds to answer my question, and over there you are trying to find out what the thing was. And the time is passed. And when I say 45 seconds, the multiple choice and fill in the blanks are 45 seconds each. When I'm asking you true or false, that's 45 seconds. You read it, you know what it is, you put it right. You don't need any reference sheet for that, okay? So that's that, he knows, ask him. All right, are we good? Are we good? How many times I have recordings over here? I did it twice? What? <laughs> See, this is when you do when you do something after 3 o'clock in the morning. So it actually came to you like that? Dub double thingy? Ah, you, you got to get bored with all the things that are coming. What is Holy schmoly, what did I do? Anyway, see you in class. Where is the last see you in class? Here it is. So, I'm a professor, professor name. Ah, oh, I know what happened. First I did IPC 144ZAA, then I copied and pasted. But I highlighted and pasted and highlight in Blackboard doesn't work. It just skips it. Ah, uh, so anyways. Emergencies, if anything happens in an emergency, immediately let me know, <clears throat> okay? Call me, leave a message, immediately let me know, so later on I can tell you, I can say that it was like, like you have your cell phone, just call me, okay? Put my number in your, in your speed dial and call me for it, I'm in an accident, I can't come for midterm test. And that's it. <clears throat> or send a message, put Microsoft Teams, send a message. So I know that happened before the test and then we can go through it and I'll do the process. I will never let you lose anything for a misfortune. I promise that, okay? Doesn't matter. What, any problem you have, I'll let you. <clears throat> I'll try to accommodate you to <laughs> post now. You're going to have emails coming back to back to back. All right. <clears throat> so, so content. I hope I didn't screw anything up over here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the beginning of our class. So we're going to do, let me see if I have audio. Where is the audio? Don't take this as just something that we do. Go read about them, about the ind indigenous people of Canada. Go read about them. The things they have been gone through, so we are sitting here now, it's something that you really need to understand. If you are a landed immigrant, if you are a citizen in Canada, or if you are just a guest, go read about them. And I'm not joking, this is something um, very important, and like, uh, um, yeah.
I used to think it as it is just uh, just a political thing and it's just a new thing, some being woke and stuff. It's not like that. I actually, the first time I actually did get dug into it, since I had tears in my eyes for a week. So do that. Anyways, back to business. The addendum. <clears throat> Read the addendum. There's going to be a quiz on it. And that quiz, you have to get 100% in it to pass it. Okay, which means I'm going to ask questions about this addendum and the information on it. Every single thing in here, I'm going to say, what are the weight of the quizzes for the semester? What are the conditions of passing the thing? So I'm going to put stuff like that. And you have to get 100% in that quiz so your midterm becomes available. So the availability of midterm is getting 100% on the first quiz which means you have to understand your contract before you begin the semester. That's your quiz number one. And you can do it even at home, and I'll give you multiple chances. I'll give you 10 attempts to do, to get it right. But you have to get it right. You have to understand exactly what we are doing. I'm going to go through every single thing in here. Stupid stuff. I'm going to say, what is each workshop's weight for your subject? You have to. Select 1% each. What is the weight of uh, test one midterm? You have to say 20%. What are the conditions to pass the subject? It's to have the weighted average of these two, which means 33.33333 from test one, and 66.66666 for test two. That value should go more than 50%. If it's 49, you're a fail no matter what you got in the semester. Okay? Careful. Another condition to pass the subject is successfully completing the project, which means your project must have four submissions for the first four milestones and at least one of the submissions of milestone five. Even if you get 10% in the project, doesn't matter. As long as you submitted the first four and you got zeros in it, no problem. And you got 10%. So minimum thing that you need to get is 10% having all the sub milestones submitted and one of the workshops. That's, those are the two reasons. And of course, the average uh, mark for the semester should be above 50. So average of the whole thing, weighted average of the two tests, and successfully completing your project, you will see the description for it. It means submitting the first four milestones and successfully submit one of the submissions of milestone five. Okay? When I say successfully submit, it doesn't mean that you got full mark in it as long as you submit it. Okay? Very easy thing. To, to do to pass, okay? So it says over here, to pass the subject, you must achieve a grade of 50 percent, yada, yada, wait, yada, yada, achieve a grade of 50 percent or better, yada, 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 submit a complete working project, which explains exactly what they are, okay? Are we good? All right. What we're going to do over here, these are just uh, a tentative addendum that I'm giving you. So all these things are tentative, which means if I am on, if I am on input and output, no, if I am on classes and resources, input and output operations, if I am on that thing and I see 60% of the students are struggling, I'm going to keep staying on that. My objection, my goal is to let you understand every single thing before I go to the next one, okay? Those people who get A plus will understand the next one anyway and can ask me later on. 60% of the class stopping that thing pauses the whole class. I'll make sure that you understand and I go forward. You will see some classes go to the next, some plus. That's why the workshops do they sometimes vary too. When I see we couldn't finish the whole thing before the workshop comes out, I'll extend the workshop. That happened like twice but it might happen. Because I use the lab too, usually that doesn't happen. But if it does, then you know. Uh, that's that one.
GitHub organization stuff. You have been already in IPC 144. You know how it works. In OOP 244, we have the organization, OOP workshops, project, BTP project. That does nothing. Anything with BTP has nothing to do with you. Um, all my notes are here. Every single thing that I have done. If you go over there, you can see all the code I have written. What does it say? Cannot receive latest commit in this time. Ooh, okay. So, and then if you come down over here, you will see the recording of every single session is up there too. So everything is up there. Okay. Everything is up there. You can, you can see all the stuff. Uh, and anything that I do in class will go on GitHub, hopefully the same day. If you see I didn't put it, you send me a message. Farad, you forgot it to commit. Please commit the list. It's going to run up there. You can ignore the please, but just tell me. Okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> how to do C, how to videos for C, C++ course objects. So this is essentially workshop zero. Okay. This is actually workshop zero. But your workshop zero has a 12th step that others people don't have it, which is adding me as a collaborator to your repository. Okay. This is this is this. I give it to everyone so people know how to create SSH keys and all those stuff. I'll go through those things very quickly. So please follow these one by one. Already people did it. You can do it too. And just send it to me. Faculty Information Office. Online Office and Help. You click on this. It's going to take you to Microsoft Teams, the team that we have for here, you see? I'm gonna add all your names over here. So the team that I have over here for all the NAA and ZAA students, all, the, all of you are gonna be here. If you have a problem, you can post actually your problem with even your code segment in there. Do not send the whole assignment that I have problem with this, how do I fix it? If you have a code segment that doesn't work and you think this is a problem, there's a, you can even put that one over there. Try to contact me. If you can't find me, put it over there and help each other. Okay? That's how real community works. That's how open source works. I don't mind if you... And again, when you do all these things, obviously you're going to cite it. But these type of things, these citings will not cost you marks. If you actually post it, everybody helps each other, and you find out the thing, you cite it, that I posted this, and everybody, when I see you say I posted this, and I got the result like that, I know it's been a collaborative effort, and I'm not going to uh, reduce any mark for it. The only time you lose mark is when you borrow someone else's code and insert it in your code, okay? And that's only for that part. Do not get the whole module from someone and say, I, oh, I copied this. <laughs> then you lose 50% of your mark. Okay, so be aware, depending on what you're doing. What is the amount of code? <clears throat> so that's that. Okay. That's the phone number I was talking about. This is essentially Microsoft Teams phone number. Okay, it, it connects Microsoft Teams and I said, so by appointment only use Microsoft Teams scheduling assistant. You click over here, the video comes up. This video was done in IPC 144 a few semesters ago with one of my uh, assistants. So I go through it and I tell you exactly how to book an appointment. Please watch it and book an appointment like that. You can easily book an appointment with me for whatever reason. It doesn't have to be you have a problem. You want advice on something. I don't know. Whatever, whatever you, you think it is, uh, whatever you think it's necessary you talk with me, you can book an appointment with me. And this is an amazing video, actually. I'm going to actually post the link for this. How to speak. <clears throat> this is an amazing video. I wish I had that. Uh, the first year of uh, the teaching. That was an amazing video. From nine to five weekdays, so I may tell you book an appointment at 10 o'clock at night. If I do that, then book it. Other than that, it's nine to five. Okay? And <clears throat> I put everything that I have in my schedule. If I'm supposed to go pick up my daughter from school, I actually 
create an appointment over this, I'm going to say, picking daughter from school. Okay? You're not going to see that, but you're going to see I'm busy at that time. Okay? So everything I do, it is there. Okay? So don't worry if you see there is a, a spot that I'm free. I'm really free at that time. Okay? So set an appointment. And <clears throat> if it's 1 o'clock, don't set an appointment for 145 because I may not see it. Uh, my response time, if you see in that thing that is you're going to see it's going to be in your test, what is my response time? It's 48 hours. So to guarantee, if you do it for next day, I may see it. But to guarantee that I see it and I respond to it is to book it for two days later so I can see and I can organize the time for it, okay? Please, please, please do not send me emails, okay? Email is just a big pile of spam from 50,000 different sources. I receive hundreds of emails every day. If you want me to respond to your email after you graduate, sure, send me an email. And you still do. And people, I go actually check rate by professors.com to see if I did something wrong and I try to fix it. People tell me, he never responds to emails. I'm telling you, I do not respond to my emails. Okay? Emails are for documentation only. And I receive your workshops over there. Okay? Microsoft Teams private chat messages. So you just type for that. My name comes up. I have a student account too, so make sure that you use fardat.soleimah.senecapolitechnic, not fsoleimah.myseneca.ca. That's a student account that I have to test stuff with. Okay, so book an appointment with that one or send, an, send a message to that, fardat this and that, and we'll see what happens. <clears throat> if my status is green or yellow, green or yellow, please, green or yellow, on Microsoft Teams, and you see it's a free time, you can take a chance and call me without asking, can I call you? You don't need to do that. If it's green or yellow, call me. If I am at the computer, I'll pick it up. And we talk, we chat, whatever it is, okay? If I am not at a computer, I'll come back and I see I have a missed call. If I have time, I'm going to call you back, okay? So you can call me at any time. Good morning, my lady. So if you need to talk to me and just out of a moment and you want to call me, beep, beep, no problem. If I'm yellow or green, these two colors, yellow, green, please. Okay? Red, it means I'm in the middle of a meeting or I'm teaching. Right now, if you look at my status, it is red because I'm in a meeting or I'm doing something. I'm developing a workshop and I set myself to busy. Okay? So that's faculty information. And these are all in the quiz, by the way. Quiz number one, all these things are there, OK? <clears throat> Weekly schedule, Fardad schedule. So that's my schedule, OK? Um, I don't know why you want to use it, but sure. That's the, it's on Microsoft Teams, everywhere. So it's there. Um, if you want to join, if you. For some reason, they are at Markham, and you want to sit up my class, sure. I, you never need to ask any permission to sit in any other class of mine. I had OP244 students who actually sat in my IPC to strengthen their, the base in C language, which doesn't matter. You can do that. Um, the weekly schedule for winter is essentially this. So what we're going to do, this reading thingy is redundant. We just simply copied this one over there and this one over there. <laughs> we just, so it's, it's redundant. Essentially, it means please read the next week's thing, OK? By reading, I told you what. Do not study it. Just glance through it to see what am I supposed to talk about next time, OK? And my classes are very dynamic. Sometimes you ask a question, and I suddenly jump, and I teach about something in week 12. It happens all the time. Okay, if a class is asking, if, if the direction of classes will goes through certain topic and I see everybody's ready for it, I don't care if it's going to be on week nine. I'll talk about it.
quizzes are going to appear over here. You're going to have, uh, so quiz number one is coming up. Right, and, and maybe I'm going to call it quiz zero, like workshop zero. So I'm going to call it quiz zero, and I'm going to make that quiz zero uh, a requirement to get to have 100% in, in all the other tests that you have. So to make sure to, to you actually go through it. Because uh, students don't read the requirements of the class. And at the end of, again, and this is not something that uh, you think I'm joking about it. But really, on week 12, somebody's asking me, how can I pass this subject? And I'm like, ah, oh, it was in the, like, at the end of beginning of the semester. OK? So please, careful about it. Uh, so that's, I'm going to call it quiz zero. I'm going to put it away. This is the first time I'm doing it, actually. I've never done this before. We'll see how it's going to happen. Midterm test is going to be there. Final over there. Blackboard Ultra Resources. I have no idea what it is. For you, go take a look at it. Student Resources. It's not me. They, it's the school put it over there. Put it. And instructions for creating course information are gladly deleted. I do not need it. Emergency online session. It's going to happen. I'm almost 60 years old, which means I'll get sick very easily. I don't cancel classes. You go over there, in here, emergency online classes. You click on it. I may even create a session like at 10 o'clock at night one day for everybody to just come in so we can test it and see how it works for the first time so you're, so you're ready for it. It's a good idea to do that. So you click over here, then you launch it. And if I start the session, you see a join session over here. When I click on join session, it comes up as follows. Ta-da! You test the microphone. You never come in listen only. You come in listen only, you're kicked out. I don't listen only, you can watch it later. While you're coming in listen only, wasting your own time. Okay? Reco always microphone. You click over there, then you test. Hello. Hello on every visit. Okay. And then go one, two, three, four. Where is it? Uh, no, that's not the one. So I'm going to select the proper microphone that is this one. One, two, three. I see over here it does like that. The green thing's coming. It means it's listening to me. If you don't see the green thing coming back and forth, it means I'm not going to hear you when you talk. Test, make sure everything is good. And listen to the echo. All right? And then after that, you click on Join Audio. And ta-da, you're in. You will see over here is the slide. I'm going to share my screen. It's a beautiful experience. I did this throughout the COVID thingy, and my classes have been no different with what I had in person. Okay? By the way, be proud of this. This is a Seneca uh, contributed product. Okay? For eight years, I've worked on this thing with, the, with my students from OOP345. Many of our code is in this product, and many of your Classmates are now working in top levels of Blindside Networks, that is creator of this application. It is one of the most popular conferencing uh, lecture tools and even uh, Department Defense of the United States is using it. So be proud. It's a Seneca product. So, and then in here I'm going to say end meeting. Session for all users. It was a beautiful session. Send feedback. <laughs> Click OK, and that's that. So uh, if we have, if I'm sick, that's where you're going to go, and we're going to do the session over there. Or if for any reason I can't come to school, that's what we're going to do. If you don't have a headset that works with your computers, I, very, it's very unlikely that nobody has, somebody has, like they don't have a microphone or something or a, or a headset. Have a headset. Okay, especially when you're at school, if you put that earphones in it, okay? Because if you are two people side by side, the feedback cannot be corrected. The my sound comes from here, goes to that microphone, comes back and creates an awful loop. Always join this with a headset, no matter where you are. It's gonna happen. So that's that. Questions? Yes, sir. Quizzes, quizzes are done usually, not usually, 99% of the time during the lab. So you have like eight minutes. And I'm going to say, turn it on. 
there are multiple choice fill in the blanks uh, approximately I think by average people get around 70 80 percent in each of them something like that yes they do he's lying yeah something like that so they are they are, they are simple stuff with small walkthroughs all the walkthroughs that I create over there generate only one character or two characters so I'm gonna say what is the output output are the A B C you just write A and that's it okay so it's like that so I just want to see if you understand the concepts that's all <clears throat> and believe me if you do your own workshop it means he didn't do any of his workshop so <laughs> So, so yeah, so, 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 so that's, I, I pick on a student usually that comes for a visit after uh, they get out of my thing. Anyway, so, um, oh, any other question? Yes, sir. I'm going to have soon the second microphone and the third microphone so you can use, so I don't have to come to you. Like Are this. quizzes held at the end of classes? or? I have no idea, whenever it pleases me. Whenever you least suspect it, let's put it down. <laughs> So you have to be in all my classes. Sometimes I do it right at the beginning of the class. Sometimes I do it at the end of the class. Sorry, you have to be precise. <laughs> Unless you have a problem, like you say, because I have a commute, I'm going to be always late. And because of you, I'll make sure it's not going to be the first 10 minutes of the class. I can accommodate that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but it's, if it's real, not because, you know, I usually I'm at my girlfriend's then, I'm going to be late. No, that's not going to be the case. Okay. Other question? Any question one? Any questions two? My lady. The workshops are going to be related with the previous le lectures. Yes, always previous. Previous and so your workshops will have stuff from IPC 144 till the week of the workshop. Okay? And when I say IPC144, don't get sad. Like, I can't say, oh, it's OP244. I'm not going to lose a for loop anymore. You can't do that, right? <laughs> so you, you learned it in IPC, and it's always like that. Like, when we are doing midterm, you're going to have the first five weeks of the semester in the midterm. And in final, you have the whole 13 weeks before that. So I'm not going to say, oh, I'm not going to ask any questions. The focus is going to be on second half, but of course everything from the first one and IPC will be used. So any quiz, test, anything that comes, it's from beginning of IPC 144 till now. Any other question? Questions? Oh, yeah. Is there a group project in this course? Good project? Define good. Like, yeah. <laughs> group project, group, group, pro I thought you were saying good project, <laughs> sorry about that, <laughs> I was, oh yeah, they're very good, I mean, <laughs> group project, yeah, A group project, yes, uh, no, we don't, I used to have that one in uh, OP345, but when open source was new, we were trying to teach people how to collaborate, but um, this is too early for group projects, because I'll tell you why. I love group, group projects because that teaches one of the most important aspects of computer program, which is working together. But at your stage, one person does the programming and other people go enjoy their lives. That's 90% of the time. See, he did it. He knows. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so that's what I'm saying. So, yeah, I remember. It was nice. All right. So, so, so yeah. So, so there, no, there is no group project. It's all done by you. Uh, if you're on time, you're, you're not going to have any problem. Okay. Uh, questions? Suggestions? Now, it comes time for suggestions. What do you hate about professors, about the things professors do that you don't want me to do? And don't tell me you don't have that thing. I want to know it now. He's like, <laughs> you want to say something? Oh, that's another thing we'll talk about. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the thing that we say we talk about. That, that's not about professors. What do you want your professor to do to make you happy? Yes. Class or the test, the final test, 
in terms of industrial, because AIM, so physical arrival. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. It's it's it is going to be in the lab. All I do, I I stopped using papers fifteen years ago. So I, I have everything on a computer, so I can't do it here. It has to be in your lab. Now, you're lucky that your lab is not at 8 o'clock in the morning. I think the other class, I think ZAA is actually at 8 o'clock in the morning. So, so yeah, you're going to have it in this. So you're going to have it in the other class. All right? But for one day, you can, right? One day. Yeah, one day. One day you can wake up two hours earlier and come. <laughs> All right. Okay, what else? Yes. Feedback on the work. Feedback. Oh, feedback on the work is on your shoulder. If you want feedback, book an appointment with me. I'll open up your code, put it under microscope, tell you exactly what you have done right or wrong. Okay? Physically, it is impossible for me to go through every single code and give you a solid feedback. I, I will send you feedback. Feedback, this is how, you, how I send you feedback. No, not, this, is, this is not how. <laughs> I'll show you. Okay, this is how I, you see this ear feedback? So I'll send you a reply to your workshop submission, and you see I copy this and I send it to you. You click on it, it says feedback. The, for, the format of the safeguard header file is, is as follows. And they are yada yada, problematic code. I'll give you an example of what is wrong and how to fix it. And this is how it's fixed. OK? So this is how I send feedback. Because it is impossible, timely, for me to go through. And, and so this is the type of feedback. The feedback that you want, your responsibility. Let three workshops pass, and every three workshops, book an appointment. I'll take you through all three workshops and give you advices that's going to stay with you the rest of your life. I guarantee that. Okay, so remember, book an appointment for feedback. So I'll take you through your code, and I'll go through it. And funny thing is that all those people who write amazing code, they do that. People who, whose code suck. They never do that, OK? You all don't, don't waste your time. This is something I have to tell. I know it's all preaching today. I'm sorry about that. Have you ever gone to a restaurant, let's say a fancy restaurant, ordered that steak filet mignon that is like $85, and then they brought it in. You say, bye-bye, and you went out? <laughs> have you ever done that? Have you ever go paid for a car? I don't know, $60,000. And in the dealership, say, I don't want to keep it and walk away. If you don't study, that's what you're doing. You know how much you're paying for this? They're going to take it out of your noses. I'm telling you. You have to suck the information out of me with force. You have to drive me nuts with your questions. If you don't, you are the person who went, I want combo number one, paid the money, and went out. Think about it, please. Don't be that person. All right? Um, so, questions? Suggestions? Objections? Done. Let's go for a five minutes break. And we come back, we have 25 minutes to talk. OK? Break. And one important responsibility of yours, especially yours, <coughs> is that because she was going, oh, I'm going to go. So I'm going to pause the recording. And I will forget to resume it. You have to tell her, why not? Resume the recording. OK? Thank you. See, I'm going to go pause. So how do I teach in class? The very first thing that you, you see I do is start, yes, I did it, thank you. So I start Visual Studio, I create a new project, and three years later, I'm going to go with an empty project next. Then I'll select OOP244, 
OP244 notes, NAA, select folder. Then in here, the name of the project is something like, I'm going to go alphabetic this time, A dash, okay, now let's put zero 01, zero 01 dash uh, January 9th. So you see that's 9th. So that's the name. Make sure you always have this selected. Place solution and project in the same directory because we are like kindergarten version to level of the thing. We don't have a solution with 50 projects in it. We have one project and it's just printing five numbers, right? So have everything in one directory. Nested directories are not needed. And then after that, I'm going to say create. And three years later, it's going to create it for me. And then I'll open this one over here. And I add new item, which is a C++ thingy. And in here, I'll call it prg.cpp. Then in here, I'm going to say include IO stream. Why IO stream? Because it's object oriented. I explain in two seconds. Int main return, not, not return. I'm going to say C out. Insert into C out. Hello, OOP244 and AA. And I'm going to insert an end line to the C out thingy. And I'm going to say return zero. It's going to tell me you have error. Why? Because I forgot to use the namespace standard. And then I control F5 it. Does it work with this? Yes. And Ta-da, it runs, and the output comes over here as hello op 244 naa right? Then after doing this, what I do is this. I'll go down here. I'll open up the beautiful directory I was working in right now. And where's my directory? op 244 Huh? Okay. A document, op 244 I've got to fix that. Then I right-click over here. And I'm going to go more options. Three years later, sort git commit. I'm going to select all that is new three years later, four years later, five years later, 10 years later. These are the things I'm going to say all new. And I'm going to say hello, NAA. Commit and push. And it is done. So what you do is that. You go home to the notes, to NAA. You'll see January 9th, there is a program CPP that says that. Got it? Anybody who uses FTP in my class to put files on matrix is a loser. Go on with technology. When you learn to do workshop zero, all you have is repositories, right? And you do your work as I did right now in your OOP244 repository. Then you can simply clone that repository on matrix. You do your work on your computer. When you're satisfied, you say push to GitHub. Poof, everything goes to GitHub. Then you go to matrix, you say pull, enter. Everything comes to matrix. Done. And everything comes perfectly. You don't need to select this to be text and that to be binary and what is supposed to go and not go. Use technology. Don't be backwards, people. Like, I, I don't file Zilla and I love it. Come on. Like, who does that now? Okay? Please. All right? So keep that in mind. And it is in all those things. And if you don't know how to do it, I'll set it up for you. Okay? If you see you could try to do it yourself, if you couldn't do it, I'll set it up for you. But anyways, that's what it is. So online notes are intro to OOP at sds.ca. Intro to OOP at SDSA. I should have put a link in that one. I didn't actually. I'm going to put a uh, link in somewhere, okay, for that. Uh, in the 
in the, in the in the course. Where should I put it? Course information. Maybe I just put it on top notes, right? Just add it over here. Uh, I should go create. What do I do? Uh, I thought there's something called the link. I can, uh, what is this one? How did? Anyways, I'll do it later. Sorry, I'm not very confident with this. Let me just cl click on create and see what. I'll, oh, link. There you go. Link. And in here, I'm going to say visible to students. And I'm going to say uh, study notes. And control V. And save it. There we go. We have the study notes. So we click over there, and we're going to come over here. And these are the study notes. OK? So welcome to object oriented. And we start OP244 now, OK? I don't do these things. You know, you never see me open something over here. That doesn't work like that, OK? So I teach. I never cover everything that you have over there. I'll, I, yeah, I, I have you seen, like, remember the old times the cars didn't work out? They, they actually put, had to put it in the thing, and somebody pushed them, pushed them, really scratch and runs. So they, they push it and try to make it run. I, that's how I do it. I start you up, and you go. OK? This is what it is. <clears throat> Object orientation. First, Earth got cold. Then dinosaurs ate too much, and they all died. And then we came, started programming. <laughs> what we did with programming was that we actually created instructions for a computer. Now, what is a computer? Uh, is a computer an intelligent thing? Um, <laughs> is a computer an intelligent thing? No. Why a computer is not intelligent? Why do you have to do it? You need to provide it instructions. It cannot function on its own. Yeah, you have to provide instruction. It cannot do anything on its own. Why bother? If it can't do anything, it'll bother and start writing code. Because you can do a lot with it. Because you can do a lot with it. Picture the dumbest person you know. <laughs> you have them in mind? OK. Imagine he's extremely fast. Dumb, but well, fast. <laughs> it takes you three hours to tell the person how to clean up the damn table. But as after three weeks, when the person learns it, he can clean up 5,000 tables in an hour. Is it worth it to spend three weeks teach the, the person to clean up the table? Yes. That's what a computer is. Dumb as a doorknob. It doesn't, it doesn't understand all this AI that you see while trying to make it intelligent. It is getting there. You see ChatGPT. Do you, why do you think ChatGPT works? It's just a big search. Goes through our intelligence documentation and tries to find the best answer out of that. It's not like it has its own mind. Soon it will. Soon it will be self-aware and we're going to be all doomed. But, <laughs> but still, it's dumb as a doorknob. You know, like, just try to talk to JetGPT and see what happens. Seriously, something's going to really. OK, anyways, so. So they started programming, writing code. The code was literally instructions to do what? Like, First do this, and it has to be very, very detailed. You know that. You cannot tell it to count something. To count something, you have to create an integer, set a value, put it in a loop, add the value every single time to run it, right? And that is difficult. They started doing like that and called it structured language. What happened is that that's C. So they said, if these things become too complicated, I'm going to package them into a function and recall the function. So I don't have to do. So that clean up the table will be the name of the function. Although it took three weeks to, to write the code, but I call the clean up the function, the robot's going to go clean up. Every time I want the robot to do it, I'll call the function. So I don't have to rewrite the whole thing over and over. That was writing a function. And then the programs got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and we had 50 different versions 
of cleaning up the table because one was a restaurant table, the other one was, was a podium, the other one was a surgery table. It, they are not all clean in the same way. So I had to do different, and it became so big that we lost control. Our brains are not powerful enough to get everything in it and keep track of it. It became important, difficult. So they said, how can we make this work? They said, our brain, we, was, we were born in this world, and our brain is used to looking at this, and immediately I'm going to say, oh, these two are similar, right? They both have keyboards. They both have screens. So they're the same thing. Computer, computer. Apple, schmapple, right? We have two different types of things, OK? By the way, Apple is against my religion. <laughs> I don't do Apple. I do everything else. Anyways, but anyways, no offense. It's a beautiful computer, and it's very cool. <laughs> OK. All right. So uh, yeah. So, so they said, we have to try to organize our code so it looks like what we do in real world. So the scientists sat and said, to be able to bring the real world, I need to know what are the basic rules I have to apply to make the real world implementable in a computer program. They said, everything's an object. Every single thing is an object. Can I touch these? This is an object. This is an object. Same type, right? But they have different colors. They both have a place that you can sip the liquid out of. One has a cap, the other one doesn't. Maybe it does and it's hidden. I don't know. Right? Do you follow what I'm saying? So there, everything's an object. This is an object. And, and this is an object, right? And this monstrous thing is an object, too. Same thing. One rotates, the other one doesn't. But they're all the same thing. So we can categorize things in our brain. He's wearing glasses. She's wearing glasses. Not similar. They are doing the same thing. Same thing, right? I'm wearing lenses. Same thing. Right? Categorizing the same thing. So if I told you, this cup and that computer, put them in the same category. Go. They are both objects. Well, you and a computer is an object. This is one of those smart answers that, like, right? <laughs> they are both objects. Of course, everything's an object. We just said that. Put them in the same category. Uh, this and this. What? In, in this classroom? No, they are not no. both in this classroom. Then if you say, these two are both in this classroom. I'm in this classroom. This in, that's in classroom. This in. So you didn't categorize these two properly. <coughs> they're, they're both black. <laughs> <laughs> one thing, they're both black. Okay, so black objects. That's one aspect. Okay? Well, how about it? Um, someone owns them. No. See, someone owning them is not a feature. It is, but it's not a feature in that manner. Both man made? No, see here, everybody's going that way. They're both containers. They're both containers. They both have capacity. They can both be full. full. They can both be empty. They both hold data. One is holding a liquid data, coffee, tea, water. The other one holds digital data. They both have status of being empty or full, right? So you can categorize, and as you see, we put it in many different, first of all, smart person over there said they're both objects. That's my point. It is an object-oriented design. Everything is an object. 
All you need to do is to put the categories together. So the very first aspect of object orientation is called encapsulation, which means packing all the features and information of, of things into one entity. That means the class is close to end, okay? We're going to end with encapsulation, and we'll do the rest the next day you're coming in, in the lab, with your quiz zero, okay? I want everybody to close their eyes. He knows what I'm going to do. Close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. Picture that you are sleeping sound in your bed. It's 3 o'clock in the morning, and everything is extremely quiet. Beautiful, you are resting. Hello. What do you do? You open your eyes, right? You open your eyes. You look around. You again hear, hello. You run and turn on the light. You hear, hello. What's going to happen? You're going to pee in your pants. <laughs> Why? What went wrong? What happened? You had a function, an action, that didn't have an owner. That's what you do in C language. You have printf. Nobody owns it. You write a function. Nobody owns it. It's as scary as beep. It's against real rule of anything. Now you're asleep, 3 o'clock in the morning. You hear, hello. You wake up. You see your 7-year-old daughter, sister, staying there over there. I had a bad dream. Can I come over here to your bed? And you say, please. Because now that hello had an owner. And it was sweeter. It wasn't hello, right? But if your 7-year-old daughter comes and says, hello, then that's a different. It's bad design. <laughs> <laughs> it means you designed that hello in a bad way. The program it was very, very bad thing. Okay, so <clears throat> that's what we do. We put in C, you had structures, right? Structures in C could have attributes of things that you want. You had a structure, uh, a structure called student, and it has student number, yada, yada, everything. Then you had a function called print. You gave the student to the function print, so the print can print your student, correct? You know what it looks like? It looks like for me to be able to talk, I have to go to a phone booth and close it, and then I can talk. And no one else can talk. If anybody wants to talk, they must come to this phone booth. That's not real life. A human being can talk. A student must be able to print itself. So the function print from outside goes inside the student. Student owns a function, not an attribute only, not only data. Putting the data and relative behavior to data into one structure is called encapsulation. A structure that doesn't do anything is a dead thing. It's like you have a body of a human, dead body of a human being over there, you say, this is for that, that's your teacher. Nothing's going to happen because he doesn't have the action teaching anymore. He has the bald head like Fardad. He has the, every feature that Fardad has, but it doesn't have the actions. That's the very first thing we're going to learn, to put the data and behavior together and make things accessible to outsiders. When you're driving a car, every car can be driven. They all have steering wheels, right? They all have a gas pedal. But do you know what, what happens when you push that? Anybody has it gone to the engine to see what it does? No. Those are the private functions that no one have access to. We have public functions. And that public functions are accessible to all the other classes, all the other structures that they can use. It. This is called encapsulation, putting the data and behavior together. 
número uno. Number one. That was the first thing we talked about. We talked about the rest of it. So by the end of the next lab, first of all, you're going to go study the addendum. And all the web page, all, the, all your page, you're going to have a quiz, and you have to get 100% out of it. If you don't get 100%, you have no access to anything in a class anymore. You have to get 100% out of it. I'll design the test, and I'll put it up. Have a beautiful day. I have to run because I have my IPC 144 class in five minutes, and I have to get prepared for it. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Stop recording.